What's up guys? Welcome to another video. We're going to be doing the whole face cam thing yet again. Uh, I figured that would be kind of a fun touch so that you actually get to see me and I don't get to see you. <laughs> anyway, what's going on everybody? It's been a long time yet again, I know, but honestly what I'm about to show you today, it actually, it took me quite a while to figure out. It took me, I don't know, right around about 9 to, nine to 12 hours. <laughs> To, to get it all operational in exactly the way I wanted it uh, to work. Which is awesome because you don't have to do all that. You just get to download the code, wire it up, and see it work, which is why I do it. I enjoy helping you guys out there. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and take a peek at how we're doing this. This is the James Bond tracking device. Now, this is going to be a very rudimentary, very uh, basic uh, construction of this. Um, I'm obviously probably going to go on down and make the coding and whatnot, make it more robust, um, have more error checking and things like that. So you'll see that when we get in to the software. Okay. So right now what I've got going on, I actually have it running over here on the bench. Um, what we're going to probably be looking at is we're going to be looking at the hardware, the software, like we normally do, of how to connect all this together. It is basically, like I said, a James Bond tracking device. What it does is it is a device that uses GPS to uh, define its location. And what, how it will work is it also uses uh, cellular. Ooh. Because I got to thinking about it, I could have you know things like the Edison or something like that have it scanned for nearby Wi-Fi networks. But you know what happens if there's no no Wi-Fi nearby? Well, then you just gotta you know you're not gonna know where the device is or the car that you're tailing or you know whatever. You're not you're not gonna know where it is. So if we're using a cellular device, then you have a better chance. I'm not gonna say it will always work because well we all know how cell phones are. So it may or may not always work, but at least it improves your odds rather than uh, Wi-Fi. Since Wi-Fi coverage isn't everywhere, unless you live in certain states, I think there's uh, certain places like Mountain View, California, or something like that, where Google lives and they give free Wi-Fi to everywhere. We don't have that where I'm from. We're a little bit backwatery, so we don't have that. Anyway, however, I did see a tweet. I'm sorry to veer off. I did see a tweet on uh, Google's launching like weather balloons or something that are going to give Wi-Fi or something. Kind of cool. Anyway. So let's get started. We're going to check out, basically, you're going to send a text message to this device. It's going to receive it, and it's going to turn it around and check its GPS and send you the GPS coordinates already formatted and ready to be cut and pasted into Google Maps. Pretty cool. Stay tuned. We'll check it all out together. Okay, guys, we're back. Now, let's go ahead and take a peek at this. I've got the, uh, up here, I've got the... Uh, Arduino going on here. We're uh, I know my drawing here says Arduino Uno, but I, I actually own a Leonardo. And it does make a difference. You'll have to read up uh, on the code and whatnot uh, for the Arduino uh, Uno versus the Leonardo. Uh, there are separate uh, example sketches that Adafruit Industries gives you uh, for each, especially for the fauna. I don't think... No, I take it back. It's not for the fauna. It's for the... Uh, GPS, the ultimate GPS breakout board, has uh, two different sets of stuff depending on what type of device you. I think there's the what is it, the mini, the something mini, the Arduino mini or something, and the Leonardo are architecturally a little bit different, dissimilar than the Uno, and I think even the Yun. But I don't know. Anyway, I just have a Leonardo, so that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So even though it says Uno, remember it's the Leonardo. So anyway, let's go ahead and zoom in on this thing. Okay, get going here. All right, so what I have is I've got the ultimate GPS is up here. The fauna is right here. And then, of course, we got the Arduino. I'm going to explain a little bit of how this works. It is really easy. Adafruit does a fantastic job of making these uh, devices very, very easy. And I'm, I'm not I'm not being endorsed by Adafruit. I'm, I'm just telling you what's out there and what works. And Adafruit does a SparkFun Electronics. They do a great job. In fact, that was what that one breakout board was for the... Uh, uh, Edison that we did for the 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 oh the plug that that uh, US uh, that Bluetooth plug that we did. Sorry, I'm my brain is going. I'm getting old. Anyway, uh, that's basically what what that's what the, the, both those companies do a fantastic job of making very simple to uh, use little breakout boards and whatnot. 
sometimes be a little pricey. You know me, uh, I'm, I'm cheap. I'm, I'm a really cheap person. So, I mean, if I can figure out what uh, chip they're using, I, I probably will just put it down on a board myself or something and just do it myself because it's cheaper. But, hey, if you got the money and uh, you don't want to have to go through all the, uh, you know, or even if you don't have the money, if you just don't want to go through all that pain and whatever, they make some really good solutions. So that's what we're using today. Um, so here we go, the Ultimate GPS. It has a bunch of different stuff. I'm not really going to go into exactly how like all the pins work and everything. I'm just going to show you what works for this deal. So we've got receive and transmit goes down into uh, digital zero and digital one because on the Leonardo, it those are the transmit and receive hardware. That's using the onboard uh, UART that's on the uh, Atmel chip that is on uh, that is on the Arduino Leonardo. The reason I put the GPS, there is a reason for this. Both of them use serial. Okay, one's going to use software controlled serial. The other one's going to use the onboard UART and use the hardware um, controlled one. So it basically does all the buffering and everything in a separate piece of hardware. The reason for splitting these up is because the GPS is actually very quick. It's amazing. Like I, I hooked it up um, just by itself. Yeah, that's the great thing about it. You can hook it up with a uh, uh, USB uh or not USB, well, uh, I used a USB one, but you know, basically one of those RS-232 transceivers, kind of like the video that we did. And if you haven't checked out that video, uh, why don't you go check it out? It's a RS-232 to TTL device. Uh, check that video out. I'll show you how to build one of those little modules. But uh, basically you can hook that up and just talk straight to the GPS uh, device. And same thing with the Fauna. You can talk straight to these things just right out of the box. It's actually pretty cool because they just use the normal RS-232 protocol. So anyway, um, what this thing does is it just starts, I mean, the minute it links up with the satellite, it just starts spitting out data, okay? So what you do is um, I want to I want to be able to capture it and parse it as absolutely fast as we possibly can because, I mean, it gives you a gob of data. We're only using a very small subset, which is just the location data. I mean, it gives you altitude. It gives you speed. It gives you time. It gives you the date. It gives you, I mean, it gives you everything, just gobs of data. It's actually really cool. This is just one application that we're using this for. So anyway... So I put that on the hardware side of the world. So we've got our five volts going in. That's coming from our Arduino. Um, I actually went to, I have it on my bench power supply, but you know, you can hook up a nine volt battery. And I don't know if any of you know that, but uh, the Arduinos, uh, sometimes the wall warts that you get uh, that are the five volt cell phone chargers don't exactly work right with it. You really need a nine volt supply. So I recommend getting one of those. Uh, let's see if I, yeah, I have one. Hopefully I can show it to you if you can see it one of these little these little little, little nine volt packs and you just put a little you know a little barrel connector on the end of it and there you go and you got a nine volt battery and they work a lot better because it also will produce the current that the arduino needs so be careful with that um because you may get a wall wart or something that just is only like a few you know million it's only like maybe i don't know a 25 milliamp wall wart or something like that and you wonder why your arduino doesn't start up properly well that's why it doesn't it can't produce enough current so the best thing to do really is to get one of those little nine volt battery packs they're cheap you can get them on amazon for super cheap you can get them uh ic station i think has them for super cheap um you know everywhere everybody sells them so just pick up one of those pick up two or three of them or something like that just so you have them laying around and throw a nine volt battery in there and it's plenty of current and and, and it'll last it lasts a long time too so anyway Five volts is coming from our Arduino, goes up there, powers this thing, and then it's just receive and transmit. And that's pretty much it. Goes in. And of course, yeah, crossover. The transmit from the the uh, ultimate GPS goes to the receive of the Arduino and so on and so forth. Okay, so yeah, you do have to, you know, cross it over. It's not a straight through connection. All right, now we come over here to the Fauna. The Fauna is yeah, just a tad bit more complicated, not really, but kind of. Um, the Fauna is the one that uh, uses uh, the cellular network. Now, those of you who don't know, I'll put links in the description for all of this stuff, where the Fauna is and antennas and wire, all that stuff that you need. And we'll see it on the bench, how I've got it all put up together here in a minute. But I'll give you... Uh, stuff on all of that okay so that'll all be in the in the description okay so what we're gonna do is uh, it has a very simple setup oh and the uh, the way you get to connect to the cellular network is you need a sim card now the cool thing is there's two ways to do this Adafruit Industries again I like Adafruit and spark from those guys those guys are doing great for the maker community you guys keep up the good work you're doing good anyway um yeah you guys did good Anyway, um, they have, SparkFun Electronics is where I bought mine, um, they have a six-month unlimited data T-Mobile SIM card package. Now, it's kind of pricey, um, but you would, you would kind of expect it. You get six months unlimited uh, data, and I think, 
I, I, I think it might be even 3G. I doubt it, though, because I think the Fauna can only use the 2G network, but T-Mobile is one of the only companies that still supports their 2G network. So uh, you want to make sure and not get something that's a 4G because it, it probably won't work because uh, the Fauna only operates on the 2G network. Anyway, there's that one, and that one, like I said, I'm using it right now. You'll see it, and it, it, it works great. Um, connects right up and everything, no passwords, no pin codes or anything weird. It just it just works right out of the box. You snap it out of the little credit card thing that it comes in and put it into the Fauna and it starts working. Um, or Fauna. How, how is that pronounced? Fauna or Fauna? I, I don't know. Fauna, I think. I've heard them say it Fauna on their web thing. Anyway, um, there's also Ting. Ting is another one that's supported through uh, Adafruit Industries. I don't know the time limit on it. I just know that it exists, but it's a whole lot cheaper. So I'm guessing the time limit's probably really short, or maybe they have like a so many message cap, or maybe only like maybe you know 500 megabytes worth of data or something like that. I don't know, but it's it's a it's a SIM card. It's called Ting. Check it out. It's a lot cheaper. It's only like eight bucks or something like that. United States, uh, eight bucks U.S. Uh, to pick that little guy up, whereas the smartphone one, it's about 80 bucks US to pick that up. But you get six months unlimited data, everything, you know. But I, I do think it's only data. I don't remember if the Ting can do phone, do voice, you know, and whatnot. It basically, act like a phone. I can't remember if it does that or not. So correct me if I'm wrong. You can check it out. I'll put the links in the description. So once you get this thing all hooked up with the SIM card, then how you connect it to your Arduino is pretty straightforward and simple. You've got a transmit and a receive, and again, I went and did a software uh, one. This is where the dis dissimilarity is between the Uno and the Leonardo, is when you're doing software serial, I can't remember how they explained it. They explained it, it's like a timing thing or something, that it works better on pins eight and seven. There's, there's certain pins that you should use for the software serial on a Leonardo versus a, a, an Uno, okay, on the Arduino Uno. So again, like I said, I have a Leonardo, so that's the way I'm connecting it. You can look this up, you can Google that, and you'll find tons of documentation talking about the difference. It's not a problem. But so I put it up on pins eight and seven, okay, because those are the two pins that I'm going to use for my software serial, and that's the two pins that were recommended for software serial uh, for the Arduino uh, Leonardo. So that's how I hooked mine up. And again, crossover again, you know, make sure that in software you have it where, you know, when you pick your pins, you pick the receive and transmit pin to be the opposite of the receive and transmit on the fauna. So that way you've got receive going to transmit and transmit going to receive. So that way it communicates properly. Then you connect up this reset pin and there's a software that basically it kind of like just toggles it. And like I said, you can make this way more robust. Like I, I didn't really do any battery saving or anything uh, on this. And you, they have tons of stuff for like the key. The key is like kind of like a wake up thing on this guy. Um, same with the, uh, what is that? The enable pin, I think on the ultimate GPS, that's another wake up thing that will basically, it'll put those guys into sleep modes. I can't remember whether you pull it high or pull it low, but anyway, it'll basically put it into sleep mode where basically the only thing running on your battery is the Arduino, basically. And I think you can even do watchdog timers and stuff like that and put the Arduino to sleep too. So you can do stuff like that and wake things up to save battery and conserve energy and all that jazz. So uh, you know, you, you guys can, like I said, this is a very basic video, so I won't go into all that. But anyway, you got your VIO. Now that's taken to the five volts of the Arduino. There is two different voltages, which I don't know why. Well, I do know why. But I don't know why they didn't put, they put, I mean, they put a battery charger on this board, you know, for crying out loud. Why they couldn't put a regulator on it, you know, maybe like a little solder jumper regulator option, I, I, I don't know. They brought the pins out. They brought the pins out so you could power this thing. Let's say you, you know, because I'm not going to put two batteries, you know, in, in my project. You know, I'm not going to put one battery in, or, or, or maybe three, you know, take two lithium batteries and put them together to get me, you know, six volts or whatever, so I can power the Arduino with that, which I may even need more than that. I may need, you know, three, uh, three, six, nine. I may need three cells, a three cell lithium ion battery to get the nine volts to power the Arduino, but then I also need a 3.7 to four, somewhere around in their volt range to power the, uh, the low voltage circuitry on the Fauna. So I, 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 don't, I don't know why they didn't throw a regulator on this board or something, or at least give you that option. I mean, like I said, they put a lithium ion battery charging circuit on this board. I mean, if they're going to put that on there, they might as well, you know, borrow the regulator for that or whatever and regulate the five volts to the charging voltage or something. I, whatever. Anyway, it's how they designed it. So, um, 
you have to have basically two different voltages going into this thing. You have to have a, like a 3.7 LiPo battery going into it. That's what this, this 3.7 volts going into the bat and ground. And then you also have the five volts because the logic is uh, TTL logic. So it's transistor to transistor, so it's five volt logic. So I don't know why they didn't go with three three volt logic because I know that the Arduino, I'm pretty sure it can do three three volt as well as many other things. I think that's what CMOS voltage is, right? So maybe not the uh, the Edison. You'd need you know the little pumps to get it up because I think it's only 1.28. But still, you know, I, mm, I don't know. It's just kind of it's, it's kind of maddening. But at least they bring the battery and ground pins out. They give you a little connector for the battery that goes with their LiPo batteries. So anyway, you have the 3.7 battery voltage that comes in, and then you've got your 5 volt logic voltage, and then that reset pin. That's pretty much it. And then what I did was just because. Um, you know, you're going to have this thing, you know, in a box, so you won't have, you know, a serial terminal, you know, barfing out, you know, the information of what's going on. So what I did was just for when you get a GPS fix signal, um, the GPS board on its own has a little blinky light that'll blink when uh, it doesn't have a fix, and then it blinks really slow, like once every minute or something like that, when it does have a fix. So um, I just wanted a little bit more indication, plus I needed to make sure my code was actually executing and things like that. I, I, lo I love indicators. You, you cannot put enough indicators on embedded systems, just because you don't always have it plugged into your computer where you can see what's going on. So I hung a little LED off of there. So off of uh, D10, I just hung a little LED that once it grabs a, a GPS fix and kind of the whole thing starts checking for uh, text messages and all that stuff, and basically it fires up, it'll light this LED. I just put that on there for me. Now, probably once you debug it and everything, I would recommend taking that off of there because you're just burning power for nothing. So, but you know, uh, it, it's a great it's a great way of you know debugging and whatnot. Always desolder it later. Okay, so that is pretty much it. How are we doing on time? No, oh, we're about 20 minutes in. Good grief. Um, let's go ahead and check out the software, I think is what we're going to do. If not, tell you what, we'll take a uh, break here and we'll go uh, to the software in the next one. All right, cool. We'll see you in the next video.